This is Ham Radio Now, episode 300. <laughs> On the road, Orlando 2017. I'm Gary Pierce, KN4AQ. Ham, before I get to anything else, Ham Radio Now is brought to you, because these are popular. So, you know, i got to make the most of them. Ham Radio Now is brought to you by you. If you enjoy the programs, get something out of them, and want to help us financially keep things uh, on the air, on the internet, on the YouTube, hamradionow.tv. Visit uh, the website. Go down to the bottom of the homepage, just the homepage, or the contribute page. You'll see Arvin's icon. And you can contribute using Patreon for a monthly contribution. Dollar a month would be great. Got about like, 52, 53 people doing that totaling a little over 300 bucks. By the way, that collects in the first couple days of any given month, so if you sign up for it, um, and they, you know, you enter a credit card, the usual online thing. So if you sign up for that uh, sometime during the month, you won't see a credit card charge until the beginning of the next month. Easy to get back out of it if you decide uh, that you don't want to contribute anymore for what, you know, it pissed you off. And uh, easy to change the contribution amount. They make it very simple. Um, to, uh, to make contributions to people who create media. If a monthly contribution is uh, not up your alley, you can do a single individual one on that page. You can see there's a um, PayPal option if you've got a PayPal account, plain old credit card option if you've got just a plain old credit card. So hamradionow.tv, that's the place to go. All right, on the road. Well, clearly I am not on the road yet. I'll <laughs> be getting on the road. In fact, this is Monday. Uh, February 6th, and I'm losing daylight, so I'm going to have to hurry up. Um, but a lot of people have requested that I show you a, a little bit more in-depth on all the radio equipment that's here in the Q-Mobile, and I'm going to do that as we begin to get on the air, on the road, and then I think I'll still have a little bit of time left to get on the road. Let's see how fast I can get through this. The Q-Mobile itself is a Toyota RAV4. It's the four-wheel drive version. It's 2007, so it is now 10 years old. It's got right at about 160,000 miles on it. Still in pretty good shape, still doing pretty well. The body has got a few nicks and dings. From the very moment that I bought this car, I was going to say, this is going to be a working vehicle. When you buy it, it's you know, in very nice condition, and the body's in great shape, the paint's in great shape, and you could keep it that way. I have never even tried. Uh, so it's, it's you know, seeing a life of not exactly hard service. It's not uh, uh, a, uh, a, a equipment hauling truck, <laughs> but yeah, it's got a fair amount of nick, nicks and dings and stuff, and yeah, it shows its, uh, shows its age to some extent. Also, the installation that I did I first paid a fair amount of attention to detail and making it clean and everything to fit just where it needed to be. <laughs> and then I added things and yeah, that really didn't keep on going that way. So I'm gonna show you the Q-Mobile warts and all. The very first thing we're gonna look at is the antennas. I kind of looked at the antennas when we were on the road to some place that took me through Shelby. I think we were on the road to Atlanta and I stopped at the Shelby Ham Fest to show the, the antennas. Um, but I'm going to show you a little bit more about them. Um, and let me go move the camera and let you see what's going on here. On the front, mounted on the cowl, on diamond K400 mounts, are two identical diamond tri-band antennas. Let's see, what's the uh, Super Gainer SGM911? Uh, they are short. Can I even, yeah, there we go. They're, they're on the short side. And I'll tell you the reason why they're short in just a minute. Um, but I'm going to replace them for the on the road trip with some longer antennas for more, for more gain. Well, the reason they're short is that they've got to clear the garage door and these more antennas on the top. I'll, I'll get to the garage door in a minute when, uh, when I show you the antennas that are on the top. So I'm going to replace these with uh, longer antennas to keep the longer antennas stowed uh, alongside the, the doors um, for convenient access. So we'll go get the longer antenna. And this one is another diamond. It's the CR2 
two, uh, 627B, it's another tri-band antenna. This antenna is used by the Yesu 8900. The 8900 is a tri-band, no, it's a quad-band radio, 10 meters, 6 meters, 2 meters, and uh, 70 centimeters. I don't use it on 10 meters at all. Uh, this antenna won't cover 10 meters. It covers 6 meters, 2 meters, 70 centimeters pretty well. And it's tall, <laughs> way up over the the, uh, the camera's uh, view. Um, the uh, Using the Yesu on 10 meters is not really practical. For one thing, it only operates in narrow mode for some reason, the two and a half kilohertz deviation. You could get away with that, that would be okay. Uh, but finding an antenna, there's only a couple of antennas on the market that cover that. And 10 meter FM is not really all that. It only does FM. It would hear AM, but it only transmits on FM. And I've got the ICOM 7000 if I want to operate 10 meter FM. It's easy to do. So put the long antenna on, this would not clear the garage door. Same deal on the other side of the car. Interesting that these are these two uh, Diamond Super Gainers are the same antenna, exactly the same antenna. But I have a little bend in them so that when they're sitting on the mount, which is not exactly flat, uh, the antennas stay vertical. And if I swap them, they kind of point cattywampus outside the car. So uh, I couldn't figure out, because I was keeping them together on one side of the car, and I could never figure out which one to put on which side, and I would often get them backwards. You know, 50-50 chance of doing something right or wrong, nine times out of 10 you'll do it. 50-50 chance of doing something right, nine times out of 10 you'll do it wrong. I realized the answer was simple. Just keep the uh, antennas on the appropriate side of the car. Antennas on the top. Now, with this shot, it's a lot easier to tell what the problem is with the garage. You can see the top of the garage back there. And these are 11 inch dual band antennas. And this is a quarter wave 220 antenna. So by the way, this one here is for the ICOM 7000 uh, for VHF and UHF. It is a tri-band antenna, it will do six meters. Unfortunately, ICOM put the six meter operation on the HF antenna port. So without putting a series of multiplexers, diplexers into the antenna line, which I tried and really didn't work very well, um, the six meter ver a port of the uh, 7000 goes back to the Tar Heel antenna in the back and not to this antenna. So this could just be a dual band antenna. It just, it's the antenna that I happen to have. Okay, so these uh, little antennas here, uh, it's a diamond, let's see what the, uh, and it, if you've got to get in and out of a garage with a small antenna, th this works pretty well. Uh, obviously it's a compromise because it's so short. It's more than a quarter wave on UHF, but it's less than a quarter wave on VHF. So a little gain on, on UHF. It's the Diamond NR72B, and it's an NMO style mount. And I want to say something about NMO mounts. I'm going to put a uh, another Diamond antenna, the NMO270. This is a, they're a dual band, um, two meter, 70 centimeter. It's a half, I think a half wave on two meters and some multiple wavelength on 70 centimeters, couple of dB gain. So clearly, you know, gonna be a better antenna over the road. Not the greatest, longer antenna would be greater. 5 8 wave, two meter antenna would be better, but it, this is going on a dual band and, uh, radio. Actually, this one isn't. <laughs> this one is gonna go on the, uh, the TYT um, MD380 DMR handheld that you'll see inside the car in a minute. So it doesn't need to be a dual band antenna. What I wanted to talk about with this NMO mount is you have to be very careful when you screw an antenna onto it. It is really easy to cross thread the, uh, the threads as you put the mount on. And if you turn too hard once you've cross threaded it, and I'm having trouble getting it set right now. If you turn too hard, uh, you'll destroy either the antenna or the mount. So it should tighten down easily. 
if uh, if you've got the uh, the threads properly aligned, and if you're having any trouble at all after the first quarter turn or so, don't don't try turning it down. You, you'll succeed, but you'll ruin the uh, the mount or the antenna or both. So next, we're going to replace the quarter wave 220 antenna, the one in the middle, with uh, 5 8 wave 220 antenna. So 220 gets the best antenna of all. Uh, going on top of the car. It gets a real 5 8 wave antenna. For what few contacts I make, and once again I will try very carefully to not cross thread it. So it what I do is, is just a very light touch as I'm uh, tightening it down until I've got several turns down and it's clearly not giving me any resistance and then I know that it's not cross threaded. And uh, over there will be another dual band antenna. That's the one that goes on the APRS radio, the Kenwood uh, DM710. Do I have the model? I'm not real good at model numbers. The Kenwood 710. Uh, it's a dual band, 2 meter, 70 centimeter, and I use it for APRS and I monitor 146.52 with it. So I'm going to go get an antenna for that. This time I'll give you a nice tight close-up. easy to unscrew the antenna. It's a little harder to screw them on. Uh, something else I'll, I'll note is there's a little button here on the top that's what makes contact and a little tab inside the antenna. Many times I've found that that tab just gets pushed a little bit too far in um, through the antenna just sitting in place and the antenna doesn't make a good contact. You know, suddenly everything disappears so it's easy to just bend it back out. This mount is actually a little cattywampus itself. I'm not sure why. Okay, so that tightened down nicely. Now the front three antennas are lined up and if I were to try to pull in the garage now, I'd screw things up. This antenna is uh, for the scanner. It's another Larson. It uh, allegedly covers everything <laughs> from VHF, uh, low VHF, 6 meters, through uh, 2 meters, 70 centimeters, and 800 megahertz. I don't know. You can't really transmit with it. Oh, I'm, I'm going to leave it <laughs> leave it be because I'm not going to change that. It stays on the scanner. Uh, I'll probably put the scanner in the mode that just tunes repeaters because I don't really have things programmed for all the public safety stuff along the route. Uh, and as a 2 meter and 70 centimeter and 220 receiver, it's not that good. <laughs> if I can hear something on the scanner, I know it's going to be really strong on the uh, mobile radios. And one more dual band uh, Larson 270. Again, the light touch as I turn it. And this uh, antenna goes on the uh, ICOM 2820 D-Star analog, 2 meters and 70 centimeters. One more antenna. This is the uh, Tar Heel Model 200, 200 what, 200A-HP. Uh, HF antenna for the ICOM 7000 in the car. Uh, let me get back behind the camera and I can uh, tilt down and show you the mount. This is a mount that I had custom welded by a, a local welding company here in Cary, North Carolina. What I did was I just brought the antenna over and held it in place and uh, alongside the car. There was nothing, you know, nothing there that showed them this uh, mounting bracket. I just held it here and I said, what I want you to do is build me something so that when I let go, the antenna doesn't fall down. <laughs> and they got it. Uh, the, uh, the mast, the vertical piece, welded to a cross piece. There's another cross piece underneath and it is bolted to a couple of bolts that are designed to hold a trailer hitch. So I don't have a trailer hitch on the car, just this. Uh, a lot of people who run the Tar Heel antenna will get a trailer hitch, and the trailer hitch has, uh, you can get them with an extension piece that comes out over here and mounts to the uh, antenna. I guess I was not really aware of that when I had this antenna. 
uh, there was this mount built. Um, so I had the custom one done. They're really strong. Uh, I was a little bit worried because this is a fairly heavy antenna and it's going to get a very strong wind load when you're doing 70 miles an hour and maybe into a 20 or 30 mile an hour headwind. You know, easily 100 miles an hour worth of uh, wind loading. And I was a little bit worried about it and they said, <laughs> put the antenna on and then stand on it and jump up and down. This mount is not going any place. And so far they've been right. So um, now I'm going to put the actual antenna, the whip part of the antenna on it. I've got this on a quick disconnect. There was a time when the Tar Heel folks recommended not using the quick disconnect, but you can see here, I gotta be able to take the antenna on and off whenever I go in and out of the garage, and unscrewing it from the base was gonna wear things out way too fast, so. Quick disconnect seems to have worked pretty well. Um, it, it doesn't seem super tight, but apparently makes a good electrical connection. Haven't really had any problems with it. Well, I've had one problem I might discuss a little bit when we're actually in motion and I can show you. A little bit of noise comes and goes on some lower frequency bands that I'm, I think I'm associating with something going on with the antenna. So there you go. The Q-Mobile, the exterior anyway, in all of its glory with the antennas configured for over the road mode and it will sit in the driveway tonight and tomorrow because it's not going into the garage. And um, I'll be loading it up with stuff and the antennas will sit in a well that gets covered up by all the equipment so I can't really change it. By the way, I am wearing the Mark Cartwright Memorial headset and Mark, I know, you're not dead. Technically not a memorial headset. I don't know what else to call it. The I, I, I'll have to get a thesaurus or something. The Mark Cartwright official over-the-road headset. Thank you, Mark. Uh, okay, we're, we're all set. Uh, let me mention the uh, the flashing light thing back there. I don't even have it plugged in, so I can't turn it on right now. The only reason it's sitting there, because I use it for the public safety events, and I discovered that when you're parked alongside of a rural road and um, you're helping a bike or something, and traffic is moving 60 miles an hour or so down that rural road, you stand out a whole lot better when you've got that yellow strobe light than you do with just your four-way flashers. And when I saw other people using it, because I was thinking, you know, I don't know, do I want to be a whacker? Do I want to be the closet cop type uh, and, you know, do the, the strobe light? I saw the folks that were doing that stood out so much better than the folks just doing their four-way flashers. And I said, yeah, it's a safety thing. I don't think I'm a closet cop. Let's look inside. Well, this is where everything looks the prettiest from the driver's point of view. Uh, the stack of radios. Um, this is the Tar Heel antenna controller, the ICOM 7000. Started life as a, well, the radio didn't. <laughs> the installation started with an ICOM uh, 706 Mark IIG, and then I transitioned to the 7000 a few years ago. I guess more than a few years ago because it's out, out, of, uh, out of print. It's a, another deprecated product. Um, the uh, Yesu 8900, the ICOM 2820, a GRE scanner, an Alenco 220 mobile. Down here is the Kenwood uh, TMD710. I can read the, the front panel now. Over here, sitting on the arm, is the uh, kind of a temporary location for the TYT MD380. I got tired of putting the HT in and out of what I call uh, a handy talkie on life support mode with uh, you know, connecting an external antenna, power, and uh, microphone. So I bought a second MD380 just to stick in there until I can figure out what I want to do for a mobile radio. And uh, then over here uh, is where the computer sits. Sen and I've got a thing for my phone up here. Since I'm using the phone with Google Maps and stuff these days, the computer used to be uh, my, uh, my mobile map running Street Atlas. Street Atlas has been discontinued. Uh, I still run the newest version I can and just have it running in the background. But uh, mostly I'm using... Uh, the uh, Google Maps on the phone for, uh, for location these days. The computer itself is just a cheap gateway. I wouldn't recommend it for anything. A lot of people will ask me specifically equipment, you know, what, what equipment you're using, and they'll want to follow my recommendation, but this is an old cheap computer and not something I'd rec recommend today. It's probably no longer on the market. 
All of these radios need speakers, of course, and there are a bunch of speakers all over the vehicle, a couple of them here. I discovered that you could uh, tape some Velcro uh, using the Velcro with a sticky back uh, onto things like this, and the Velcro would stick to the carpeting. Didn't need to put uh, Velcro on the on both sides. Uh, some parts of the carpeting, the Velcro would hold very well. There's a couple of the other speakers. These give uh, the passenger really <laughs> good sounding audio. Uh, and they're cheap Radio Shack speakers. I should have put in better speakers, probably Motorola. You know, I probably should have bought old uh, uh, surplus Motorola speakers. They would have sounded better and worked better, but took a chance. They're okay. This is part of the power distribution. Everything is power pole. And with this many radios, you need to distribute a lot of power. I'll show you the main power distribution in just a moment. But this is just sitting, and I think it's Velcroed as well <laughs> to the uh, passenger well. Airbags were a consideration from several points of view. Uh, the first is the side curtain airbags. When I was initially going to get things set up in the car, I decided I didn't want to be taking down the headliner with side curtain airbags in it. So all of these antennas were mounted by a uh, local professional two-way company. And they did it in about four hours. I waited about 30 days after I bought the car to make sure it wasn't a lemon, make sure it didn't have any intrinsic, real serious problems. And then took the car over to the local two-way company and uh, described what I wanted. The five NMO mounts on the front, the K400s on the, uh, on the cowl. And uh, they didn't do the mount for the Tar Heel antenna. That was done by the separate uh, uh, welding company. But they did do all the wiring, the power wiring, and the coax, and all that. And I'll show you where all that comes, comes out uh, next. Um, in addition to not wanting to get uh, tangled up with the side curtain airbags, obviously the uh, computer that can sit here would be in the direct line of fire of the passenger side airbag. So I have that unplugged. I don't have a passenger very often. People do ask, can you actually carry a passenger? And I think I've shown in a video or two or a still picture that, yes, a passenger can go there. The computer can either swing way up in the front or it can swing between the, uh, the seats. This is a small SUV. There's not a lot of room between the seats, but it can crowd in there. And when I've got the computer out of the way sufficiently, then I can plug the uh, passenger airbag back in. The driver's side airbag, which would come out of the uh, steering wheel, is not going to impact the radio at all. Um, I don't really want to think very hard about getting in a rollover accident. Probably me and the radio equipment are going to get pretty tangled up if something like that happens. I, you know, might be in pretty bad shape as a result of the roller ac rollover accident no matter what. But yeah, that wouldn't be a good thing. Uh, I'm aware of that, I guess. I'm taking that risk. Ask me if it ever actually happens. Most of these radios, of course, are actually just control heads. The 7000, 8900, ICOM 2820. These two on top don't have remote control heads, the GRE scanner and the Linco 220 radio, so they sit on top of the stack. It is top heavy. There's no question that it makes it top heavy. Uh, and it will shake a little bit, but in actual driving down the road, that's not really an issue, and uh, plenty of uh, resistance to pushing buttons and turning knobs. So that's, uh, that's not a problem. The radios themselves are under the back seat, the ones with the control heads. And there's three spots for them. This is the uh, ICOM 2820. They don't look like much without their control heads on them, just blank faces with ports. Uh, the 706 is in between, and uh, way over there is the 8900. And then finally, uh, when I went to put in the Kenwood radio, I was out of room. So I stuck it under this seat, and it's the kludgiest of all. It's, it's not mounted, it's just kind of stuck in there. You know, maybe someday I'll clean up the installation, but uh, here's the hose. Sorry about the bouncy handheld. 
here's the hose that uh, has most of the wiring and here's the extra wiring that wouldn't fit in it as I added more things and here's my biggest uh, claim to shame just a bunch of wires that are kind of stuffed underneath the mat because there was no place else to put them and this is the main power distribution underneath in between the uh, the back seats it's just a big power pole distribution box you saw the auxiliary one up front and this is where all the coaxes come in have no idea how they routed them They're just you know kind of a mystery port that heads back into the car and only the guys that did the installation know exactly where they uh, where they came from there's a couple of battery chargers for the icom 92 ad and kenwood f6 convenient to be able to rapid charge batteries well uh on the road and conveniently they operate off of 12 volts so you know maybe someday i'll clean it up but you know we're 10 years into this uh, vehicle i don't know how many more years it's got to go i keep thinking if i ever buy another car it's not gonna get this extensive an installation it's been fun i enjoy using it but i'm probably not going to do it again but talk to me when it's new vehicle time maybe i'll change my mind i don't know all right, I got to go pack a lot of stuff and uh, do some radio programming and things. A lot of work before I get on the road the uh, morning after tomorrow, but the next thing you should see is me pulling out of the driveway. Uh, see where we did last work. Um, I'm just setting up here. Um, yeah. anyway, um, <laughs> 20 meters is um, dead. Uh, trust things are well. Things are uh, very well here. Except and, for um, this signal. Uh, uh, now, what's it done? Oh, back in uh, 2014. Totally <laughs> uh, gives his call okay sign. Well, things are fine at this end. AA2 Kilo Delta, Victor Kilo 3, Mike Oscar. Victor Kilo 3, I believe that's Australia, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> 14170, there isn't anybody else in the band. Uh, okay, there's somebody else. That bill hasn't passed yet, although they've resurrected it and they're trying to get it through. And, uh, you know, certainly that would be uh, very helpful. Okay, he's talking about the Parity Act. In that regard, um, you might uh, consider trying to join the uh, association so that you have... Anybody else on the band? Pretty empty. Okay, back to 14170. I, I'm, I'm backed right up against the garage and the uh, rain gutters. I don't think I can transmit here. Well, let's see. Yeah, I can. I'll try calling if he uh, CQs or something. Unfortunately, it doesn't sound like he's going to be uh, looking for another contact. So I'm kind of out of time here.